artist, my name is Heather Duncan and I'm the artist with Duncan House Creative. And today I'm gonna to show you a tutorial on one of my most favorite watercolor lessons. It's called Watercolor Batik, okay? Um, I have a couple of examples here. Here's one, here's another, and here's yet another. Um, this one is just a little card, isn't it cute? So this is something if you would like, you could even do this on some little greeting cards. Let me explain to you first what batik is. Some of you might be familiar with what, what batik is. Batik is a type of fabric, or it's actually a type of art that is used on fabric where the artist uses wax or other some other form of ingredient to cause a resist. So they would take some fabric and they would paint onto the fabric with the wax and then they would dye it, leaving behind these really cool patterns. You would see batik patterns in African fabric, lots of African fabrics um, or African cultures have batik as part of their uh, traditions. Another really popular place to see batik fabric is on islands. Um, you might even have seen them if you've been to Hawaii. Some of the sarongs and different wraps and stuff are a type of batik fabric, okay? Um, I'm going to show you a couple of just examples of batik patterns that I like and they're easy, but you can always quickly go over on Google some different batik patterns and see what you like also. I'm gonna show you how to get kind of the same effect onto our paper today. Typically, whenever someone does a batik on a fabric, they do the resist with some sort of wax um, or some sort of medium that resists the ink, and then they kind of do like a tie-dye. So that's why you will see behind our pattern is sort of a, a tie-dye technique. All right, so that's what we're going to do for our tutorial today. I am so glad that you're here. Let's go over our materials first. All right, guys, let's go over our materials. We are going to use some Canson watercolor paper, which you know, Canson is my favorite. This is a nine by 12 that I just simply cut in half. So it's, I guess, nine by six, I think. Yes. Um, we are going to go to use this masking fluid marker by PBO. This is the most important part of this, um, what, tutorial, thank you. Because you have to have something like this to make these really clean white lines, okay? And honestly, I think using something like this over like a paintbrush uh, is much more precise. So this is very important when it comes to doing this project. You're gonna need some washi tape to tape down your paper, a palette, and then today I'm gonna to be using Coloration's liquid watercolors. I love, love, love Coloration's liquid wa watercolors. They are actually a brand for school-aged children, um, but they're phenomenal. And the way that the salt, that's another one of our, uh, one of our um, materials, you'll need some salt. I'm using kosher salt, but you can just use regular table salt if you want. Um, and then I have water and also a paintbrush, just so you know. And if you want a paper towel. The salt really reacts wonderfully, oh my goodness, so wonderfully with this Coloration's liquid watercolor. It is my favorite um, watercolor to use anytime I'm using salt. It just, because it's it's in a liquid form, the medium is liquid, it reacts with the salt in just a much more dramatic way. All right, so I'm, I'm excited for you to see it. Okay, um, first, I'm gonna show you uh, the steps that we're gonna take to make this batik. The first thing we're gonna do is tape down our paper. The second thing we're going to do is draw our batik pattern with our drawing gum marker. And then the third thing that we're going to do is to watercolor the background and then add a little salt. It's super simple, super easy. Um, we're really focusing on repetition here. Repetition, repeated pattern, is really an important artistic quality when it comes to uh, this batik pattern, okay? So I want you to choose some sort of pattern when you're thinking about it that you're okay repeating a lot of. Um, again, I'll show you these. Here's two examples. 
I do this one a lot. I, I think it's kind of pretty. You could even flip it upside down. It kind of looks like a mermaid. Um, and then I like the look of like clean white lines also, but you're just going to have to choose something that you're okay with repeating over and over again. Okay. You don't want to choose something super intricate. And then by the time you're done, it, it just, it doesn't look as, as, uh, neat and clean. Okay. Actually, let's start by going over some different examples of patterns. So I just have a black marker and some white cardstock, and I'm just gonna show you some examples of patterns that I've seen, okay? And don't mind, this isn't gonna be precise, but some are like lines going horizontally and then vertically. This one is a really pretty one. I actually really like this, but I'm drawn to just straight, clean lines. So this is something that I really enjoy looking at. Another one that I've seen people do are like diagonal lines. And excuse me, I have something under there. I'm gonna move it. it. Keeps messing with my lines. So they might do something like this. Okay. So that's what that one would look like. Maybe make this a little longer. There. Um, another is the scallops, and I told you that's one of my favorites, where you just kind of make scallops. I might do this one tonight, because it always is my favorite. Like this. And they don't have to be perfect. If you notice, too, um, when you're looking at, like, African batik, a lot of the stuff is very, uh, it's not super intricate. It's... It's really done quickly because they're trying to make a lot of it, you know? So, might even add a second line under there. Maybe little rainbow scallops. There's that. Um, what's another one I've seen? Oh, dots. Like, some people put dots. And then, like, four lines. And then dots. And four lines. There's so many different ways you can go about this. Oh, I've al also seen people do uh, like diamonds. I remember one woman did diamonds. I I did this in my um, class, my senior adult class, and it was really fun because a lot of my senior adult women, well, they were uh, into quilting and so this was something that they really enjoyed kind of thinking up their own pattern for a fabric Okay, so you can do something like that. Really the sky's the limit Honestly, these are just some simple patterns. I would pause the video go over to Google go over to Pinterest whatever and look up some batik patterns you could find hundreds probably on there Okay, and it's b-a-t-i-k batik all right, first things first, we are going to tape down our paper. Make sure my paper is in frame. Use my washi tape. Washi tape is amazing, except for when it splits like this. Just put that over there. Um, I love washi tape because it comes off so perfectly and precisely. I hope I don't run out here. I've used this roll quite a bit. I think I'm gonna get, I think I'm gonna do it. Yay. Awesome, barely, just barely got that through. Okay, so I have my paper taped down. Now what I'm going to do is use my drawing gum marker to draw from the top to the bottom, okay? It is important that you draw from the top to the bottom because, um, if you work your way up, then your hand is smudging up in it, okay? So that is one kind of trick. So I'm going to do some scallops today, just honestly, because it's quick. And I also really like it. Now, when I do scallops, I come to the middle. And I don't even honestly know if you can see this. I might actually speed this up so you don't have to watch me drawing invisible lines. And we can get to the painting. Okay. 
Okay, my um, pattern is done. Now it's time to apply my paint. We are going to use, and actually I'm gonna get my salt ready too. I'm just gonna pour a little bit of my salt into my tray here and have all that ready. We're gonna be using kind of a wet on wet technique where we're going to be blending the colors. So I'm gonna take my water and put it down on the paper. And I am choosing two colors. I am choosing blue and yellow. Now, if you want, you can choose blue and red. Um, you can mix your own colors. It's best if you're working in two colors. And um, really, look here, I'm making some green. Using those colors to mix on the paper. And then we're going to be adding our salt as we go. So I'm gonna do about a third of this paper. I wanna make sure my brush is real good and clean before I dip it in that yellow, because that yellow will um, get all muddy. Put some more on there. Maybe come in here with some blue. And I'm really being kind of haphazard here. I'm not really too worried about what that looks like. Um, I'm really just worried about uh, getting my salt on while it's still wet. Okay, now that salt is going to draw up all of the liquid in our liquid watercolors creating a really fascinating texture. I promise you will just be amazed. It's really, really cool. Okay, there's some blue. Clean off my water, or my brush. Add some yellow. I might even blend those colors on the paper. Now, the drier your brush when you pick up the color, the more concentrated the color will be, okay? So if you want a really light color, you're gonna want a really wet brush with water, okay? Okay, now I'm gonna put some salt down. There we go. I'm going to pick up some yellow. Good, my yellow's not too... I was a little scared I got it a little too um, diluted there. It still looks good, though. Ah, looks so good. Add some more yellow on this side. Jake. And then kind of add some blue on top of that and just mix it onto our paper. Again, this is called wet on wet, where we kind of creating mixtures on the paper here using our wet ink. Awesome. Now I'm going to take my salt. I'm going to go on top of my paper with it. You want to be pretty liberal. You don't, don't shy away from the salt. And honestly, if you have kids, that would be kind of a cool experiment with some of your leftover salt or leftover paint. You could um, have them use the liquid watercolors and like one half of the paper and put table salt like finer grain sea salt and then do liquid watercolors on the other half of the paper and do the coarse uh, sea salt and see what are what are the differences did one affect the paint in a different way It'd be kind of fun to see okay awesome 
All right, we're gonna let this dry. While we let it dry, I wanna also show you um, this really cute gift card. Isn't it so cute? I just did the same exact lesson on a little card that I got like a package of 25 cards or something, blank cards from Michaels. Um, they're not super expensive. I think maybe $10 plus you can use your coupon. Um, and I just taped around the edges, did my uh, drawing gum marker, and then I painted and added my salt. And I let it dry really good. I probably let this dry overnight. And then I kind of wiped everything off after that. Um, I just love that you could make these and give them away to a friend or something and they would be a great card for any any type of thing so just an idea okay we'll come back and see what this looks like after it dries okay my composition is dry and now I'm just rubbing off really gently all of the salt to the side okay and by the way I always like to say this you cannot eat the salt so don't you know scrape the salt off to the side and decide you want to eat it okay just throw it in the trash but by by the way the salt is really pretty actually especially if you're using larger like kosher style salt I'm gonna put this over here um, so I don't get it everywhere all right after you take the salt off kind of dust it off here you're going to take the ball of your fingertip and you're just going to rub this masking fluid off of your paper and you don't want to rub like super harshly because that um, paint will lift and you also want to make sure that this is really good and dry you can even take your whole hand just use those balls of your fingertips there um, if your paper is not dry, I let this dry for a good like 30 minutes to an hour, okay? In in between the pause time here. Um, but if it's not completely dry, it will rip your watercolor paper because your watercolor paper is pretty fragile. So. Just get that off. And then I'm just gonna take my paper towel, kind of rub that residue off. There we go. Ah. Okay, so it's nice and clean. I just kind of rub my hand, make sure there's nowhere I missed. And I'll take all that off later. Um, and then I'm gonna lift up my tape. <gasps> This is the big reveal. I love it. It's my favorite part every time. Ah, oh, looks so good. The washi tape does such a great job at keeping the paper um, clean and coming off easily without tearing. So good. All right. Ah, oh, it looks so good. I'm just looking at all of the cool texture that the salt made and just the resist how those lines are so clean and beautiful i was saying in another um i'll show you some of my other batiks here so that you can see just the differences between them so this one was like a blue and a blue and red or a green and red then these two were the same color but i did different designs on them i really i really like the the blue and the um, yellow together and then this is my example of a little card okay I had said before but I love doing these projects in on these little greeting cards another really fun thing that you can do with the drawing gum marker is maybe write scripture or write your favorite saying or write maybe a, you know the name of someone maybe someone's having a baby or someone's getting married you can do some really cool artwork with this. You can just write their name and then paint over it in a really pretty color. Maybe even do these lines with uh, your washi tape to make it look really fancy and professional. They make great gifts, super cheap, really great gifts, okay? Um, and people will definitely look at your work and say, how did you do that? How did you get 
the paint not to go there. I don't know, you might have even seen artwork like that before and thought, how did that person do that? So just a little trick right here. This pen, it's the best thing ever. So you're welcome. Thank you so much for joining me in this creative space. I always, always, always have a blast with you. Even though you are on the other side of the camera and I am right here and I so wish we could be together. It's really difficult for me because I have always taught my classes in person and sometimes I teach classes up to 30, 40 people. So this is really hard for me to just be here by myself teaching you knowing that you were there on the other side of the computer doing um, this art with me. So um, I so wish I was there with you too. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. All right. Um, you guys have a great day or evening, whatever time of day you're doing this. And remember, always be creative um, and share your work with others. Uh, remember, creativity is contagious. So pass it on. All right.